Happy holidays. I have some creepy crafts in store for you today. And if you're anything like me, you have a really hard time letting go of the autumn season. It has something to do with all the colors and the smells, pumpkins, but most of all for me, Halloween. I like to kind of keep my creepy decor going on all year round, but especially during the winter holidays. So I came up with three projects that I wanted to share with you, and I hope it inspires you to creep up your decor as well. First, I got to work on measuring and cutting all the wood we would need. Next, I lightly sanded the edges to make sure everything was smooth and that there were no splinters. What you'll need if you want to make this project is one 4x4 that is 8 inches in length, one that is 6 inches in length, one that is 4 inches in length, and then you'll need a 1x4 that is 6 inches in length for the brim, and one 2x4 that is 3 inches in length for the top of the hat. I really love chalk paint. So I picked up a can in linen white and painted on one layer. I used acrylic paint in dark gray for the hat pieces. Once everything dried, I took them all outside in the rain and cold to sand. Not my favorite type of weather at all, but it worked out. This step for sanding is really optional, especially if you don't want to have that worn down look. But in my opinion, I think it truly adds to the creepy factor in the end product. I also personally like to see the wood knots and grains through the paint. I used my glue gun to glue the wood pieces in place and it held very well. I measured and used a pencil to mark exactly where I needed to center the wood. I've used many different sealants for chalk paint in the past, but I really like the wax finish because it gives a matte look to the final piece. I always make sure that I have extra pieces of fabric or old t-shirts that I have set aside for these kind of projects. I really like applying the wax with a cloth as opposed to a paintbrush. I then started sculpting the snowman's face and buttons from polymer clay. He's supposed to have a scarier look to him, so I wanted a long curved carrot nose and some buttons that kind of looked melted. You always want to use foil if you're doing a larger, thicker piece as the base mold of what you're creating. Then you'll want to apply a layer of polymer clay that's about a quarter of an inch thick. If you're working on thinner pieces like these buttons that I was working on, you don't have to worry about doing the foil. Just remember, the thicker the clay, the longer it will take to bake. By using foil, it will help you save clay and prevent cracks or bubbles. I then baked mine according to the instructions, which was at 275 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 minutes. I used a few different acrylic colors to create the orange that I felt was right for his nose and then left that to dry. I really wanted to make the eyes look like coal, but I just wasn't feeling it and I ended up painting them on the snowman with acrylic paint later on in the video, which was a better choice. Sometimes you do things that just don't feel right when you put them together, so it's okay to take a few steps back, reevaluate, and then maybe try a different option. The snowman and I had a little discussion and we decided that he needed a friend, so I got to work. Spider sidekick to the rescue. I used a little felt ball that I purchased at the craft store and some wire that I poked through his legs and then just used some pliers to shape them.
To give them some cute eyes, I used two rhinestones that I had set aside from a previous project. So, Mr. Spider Friend is done. Like I said before, I like to keep old fabric or shirts for projects, and the same goes with collecting my husband's flannels. I can't tell you how many times I've used them for projects, and this one would make a perfect scarf. So I cut out a few rows and pulled on some of the threads to make it look a little more tattered. I cut out two pieces of holly leaves from green felt, four little white circles to glue to the bottom of each corner of the snowman so not to scratch any tables, and then picked out a few red felt balls for the holly berries. Now it's time to assemble our snowman. You should have some paint for the eyes. I used gray, white, and black, your carrot nose, buttons, hat decorations, felt circles for the bottom, your spider friend, and the scarf. I was really looking to make some spooky eyes, and since the coal idea didn't work out, I couldn't seem to come up with anything else. That is, until I spotted one of our pumpkins that was still sitting on the porch in the snow. So I got this idea to maybe do something that I might carve out of a jack-o'-lantern, and I'm really happy with how they turned out. I then used my glue gun to glue on the carrot nose. and I ended up cutting an extra piece of flannel to glue around the hat. I then put on my holly leaves, along with the moss, and then finished it off with the three felt berries. Next, I put on his scarf. And then took a moment to glue on his buttons. Can't forget to add Mr. Spider Friend. Find the perfect spot for him. And as I was finishing, I noticed that there was some touch-ups and little details that I wanted to add. And one thing that was really bothering me was a knot that I sanded just a little bit too much on the face. So I went back in with some white chalk paint just to kind of minimize that. And here he is, our finished snowman. Just to add a little extra creepiness to your holiday season. I'm going to be honest, this next project kept me up at night. I made a lot of mistakes and redid a few things, but I'm really excited to show you how it turned out in the end. So I started with two different size styrofoam eggs. I cut a wire and attached the two pieces together. After both pieces were attached, I started on some needle felting. I used black felt material and a tool specifically for this hobby. I'm not a pro, nor do I know any terminology for needle felting, but there are so many talented artists out there that create such amazing works of art with this skill. Basically, I wrapped my felt around the little styrofoam eggs, being mindful of where my wire was, and stabbed it until it laid pretty flat. I used more felt if I saw any styrofoam showing through. I laid my newly created felt body on a piece of paper and sketched out a wing. I liked using the paper to give me an idea of the wingspan size I wanted, and it really helped me while I was constructing it. 
I used pipe cleaners to lay out the first set of bones in the wings. I then wrapped some wire around them to make them a little thicker and stronger. Then where there would be joints, I wrapped some extra pipe cleaners. I held them up every once in a while just to make sure they were pretty stable and didn't collapse in on me. Next, I used masking tape and slowly began to wrap it around the wires and pipe cleaners. I tried to lay it as flat as possible and angled it so I could continue down each set of bones. I used more tape in the joint areas. I then used my template to make a second wing and when I was done, I just flipped it over so it's facing the opposite direction of my first wing. I mixed some acrylic paint to give me a dark gray and then painted both wings entirely. It didn't take long to dry and I could see them really coming along. I was getting excited, but this is also where I started to make some mistakes and had to refilm a few steps. Always frustrating, but it ended up being really worth it. Old socks and nylons always come in handy as well. Just by cutting these down the side and opening them up, I was able to have enough to be the skin of the wing. I laid out the bones on top of the stocking to get an idea of where I would be painting my matte Mod Podge. I used a very generous layer of this wonderful stuff and it seemed to be enough. The nylons that were used were rather thick, but I would love to see ones that are a little bit more translucent as well. Once I painted on one coat, I hung them to dry. So you should end up with a result, something like this. You don't want it too stiff that it won't bend, but you also don't want it too soft that it's just gonna kind of collapse. I used my glue gun to glue down each row of bones. I actually made a mistake where you can kind of see I had glue on there before. I tried super glue, it did not work. The glue gun was the best option, but it's also very helpful to have those markings to know exactly where you need to lay the bones down. I used a very thin layer of glue, but some still kind of seep through the edges, so I used a little bit of acrylic paint to cover up any of the hot glue that showed through. I think this part had to be the most satisfying part and that was cutting off all the excess fabric. This is where I could really see the wing coming together. You're going to want to go back and you're going to want to kind of make little wave cuts along the bottom of the wing, just like I'm doing here. And oh my gosh, we have our wings. I can't tell you just how good this part felt. I really should have put my camera in a better spot for this part, or maybe had a closer view of the clay, but sometimes filming can be rather difficult when you're not constantly looking through the camera. I took out some polymer clay to make the nose and mouth section for my bat. I also wanted to make some ears and some feet for him. I really didn't know if I was gonna be able to pull this off. I'm really not all that great at sculpting, but I enjoy doing it, and that's what matters most. So I sculpted the nose and mouth area twice, but I was even able to give him some fangs in the end. Then I moved on to his ears. I used a layer of foil to help me keep the shape, and then I used one of my sculpting tools to add some little waves on the inside of the ear. Lastly were his feet. I made three little claws on each foot and used the same sculpting tool to create some wrinkles. I baked my clay according to the instructions and I was ready to bring this bat to life. My intention was to put the wings into the styrofoam, but as I held them up, I really liked the wings glued behind him. I did have a little glue leak out between the wings and the back, but I was able to use my handy dandy black acrylic paint to cover that up. I then glued on his nose and mouth section and two plastic eyes that I use for other projects. Yes, I have a stockpile of eyes, don't judge me. Then on went his ears and his feet. I went back and used a little bit of light pink paint to give some more character into his ears. Here comes those flannels again. Extra fabric always. 
This was another one of my husband's flannels and it made for another perfect scarf. For this next project, I'm using alcohol markers and watercolor paper. The last thing I wanted to do this holiday season for you was to make you a holiday card. One of my favorite traditions to learn and talk about during this time of year is the Mary Lloyd. It's an old Welsh tradition that still takes place today. It's essentially a horse skull mounted on a pole with a sheet attached to it for a person to hide under. When the tradition started, it was with a group of people who would accompany the person dressed as the Mary Lloyd, and they would go around town and knock on doors singing a certain song. The people in the house would have to sing verses back to the group and deny them entry in doing so. The Mary Lloyd and its group would continue to try to win entry and sing more and more verses, and they would likely finally win entry. When they would enter the house, they were given beer and food and then sent on their way. The tradition nowadays has changed a little, but they still go out dressed as the Mary Lloyd herself and sing and dance and drink the night away. My gift to you, if you're a Patreon member, is this holiday card. Once you print it, cut below the black line and fold it in half. And from my family to yours, we hope you have a very safe and happy holiday season.